Welcome to our first inventory system tutorial where we get our user interface set up. By the end of this video, you should have something like this with a section on the left for inventory slots and one on the right for a zoomed in picture of your items and a description. You'll also be able to pause the game and bring up the menu with a button press. You don't really need anything getting started, but I do recommend having a player who can move around and later collect items as well as some sort of a health system so that later on we can test whether our healing items are actually healing you. Now getting started, you're going to head over to your hierarchy where you can right click and we're going to add a new UI canvas. I'm going to call this one an inventory canvas. One important thing you'll want to do before you go any further is clicking on your canvas. And actually, let's go into game view here. And what we're clicked on our canvas, if you open up the canvas scalar component, at the moment, you'll notice that it's already set to constant pixel size, but we want scale with screen size. This will just make it so that your screen automatically adjusts to other resolutions. And in game view, you can see that I'm currently in full HD. So I want to make my reference resolution also match it at 1920 by 1080. Now to get started, we're just going to add all of the things that we need for our inventory, and then we'll sort them out afterwards. So you can head to your hierarchy here where you could right click. We're going to add a UI panel. This is going to hold all of our menu, so we'll just call this one Inventory Menu. Now on that menu, on one side we'll have slots, and the other side will be our description, so we'll create panels for both of those things as well. Now within each of these, there are going to be even more subsets. So for example, our Inventory Slots will have items for the actual slots themselves. So again, we'll create yet another panel. I'm going to call this one Item Slot. Now we will actually turn that into a prefab and later make many copies of them. So for now we can just leave it right there. And in our inventory description, we're going to need two panels. Now the first of these panels we can rename and we'll call this one item image. And the second one will rename to be our item description. All right, now at the moment that is a big mess of white on our canvas and that is definitely not how we want things to look long-term. So let's get to work. So first off, let's head up to the top of our panels here to our inventory menu. There's a few things we want to do. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this white background and go for something black. And I usually like to keep my alpha around 40 so that it is fairly see-through. At the end, we're going to end up with something that looks not unlike what you find in Hollow Knight, which is a fairly minimalist black see-through panel where you can still see the action on the other side just a little bit. If you open up your Rect Transform, we're just going to create some margins around the outside. I like to use 150 on the sides and 140 on top. And I just like these numbers because they fit nicely with all of the other panels we'll be adding as we go. Now with that done, we want to manage the two panels that are on this. And we're going to have one on the left, one on the right. And so to do this, we're going to add a horizontal layout group. What this does is it allows the parent object, our menu, to control the inventory slots and description panels, which are underneath it. I'm going to begin by creating some padding. So this is the margin around each of them. And I just like to have 25 all around. We do not need to force expand anything. And for the moment, it doesn't look like that's doing a whole lot, but it will in just a moment. Now let's head down to our inventory slot. Once again, I'm going to open up the image here, and we're going to make this black with an alpha of about 40. Now we are going to manually set the size of this panel. I'm going to go with something like 950 by 755, which should fit the space quite nicely. I'm also going to go to my inventory description side now which once again, I'll set to black with an alpha of 40. This one will also be 755 for height and our width should fit in pretty nicely at about 600. Now with that done, it is starting to look more and more like the inventory we want this to be. Now for my inventory slots, we're actually going to add a new component here to control how our slots fit in. This one is called a grid layout group. And this gives us the ability, you'll notice already that my item slot was put up into the top left corner here and scaled down. And so we can control how these fit into that space and also what size they are. I'm going to make my cell size 150 by 150 for each of these. And as we did padding at 25 before, I'm going to use a spacing of 25 as well. The start corner will be our upper left and we want to go horizontally so that as I, if I were to copy slots, you'll notice they fit in really nicely. The one thing I do want to change though is I don't want to align them to the upper left. Instead, I'm going to align them to the middle center. Now that looks a little funny when there's just one of them, but as we add a bunch of these, you'll notice that they fit perfectly then inside of the space with a uniform margin around the outside looking really sharp. 
Now, if you want to, you can leave it like this as it does look mighty pretty. However, ultimately, we're gonna make one of these into a prefab and copy it so you won't need the other ones. All right, let's head over to our inventory description now. And just as we used a horizontal layout group to define these two spaces, for this one, we're gonna use a vertical layout group. This is just gonna allow us to pick how much space, how the other two um, pieces fit together, our image and our description. Once again, I'm gonna use a padding of 25 all around and a spacing of 25 as well. We'll unclick our child force expand as we don't need to do that. And now we can look at the two items as well. Let's look at our item image here. Now opening up the rec transform, I actually wanna set this one to a size of about 200 by 200. If we go back up to our inventory description, in the vertical layout group here, we can align these to upper center and that looks pretty nice. We can now head down to our item description. And again, we're just gonna have to set our size. This one will fit really nicely if we do a width of 550 and a height of 475. All right, with that done, we have the basic UI set up for our inventory system. One thing I wanna do though, before we finish up this first tutorial is add our first code. And this is going to be an inventory manager script. So we can actually head right down to the bottom, create a C sharp script called inventory manager. I'm gonna go right up here and click on my inventory canvas. And that's actually where I'm gonna add this inventory manager. Now the inventory manager script will have two purposes. One will be to open up this menu when we push a button and the other will be to pause our game. Now, before we head into the script, if you click edit and go to your project settings, you can click on input manager, and this is what controls which buttons do what in Unity. You'll see that I already have an inventory one set up and I press the button E to get it, but you can add extra buttons by adding some to the size, which will just create a button down at the bottom and you can pick what you wanna call it and what button will activate it. All right, let's get into that script. So the first thing we're gonna need is a public game object reference to the object that we want to toggle on and off. We'll call this inventory menu. You'll also need a private bool called menu activated, which will just keep track of whether the menu is currently on or off. At that point, you can head down to your update method. And here we're just going to do an if statement, checking for the input of our inventory button, the one we just created in our input manager. Now we could start by just getting our inventory menu and setting active true. However, we first want to check our bool to make sure whether the menu is already activated. So now if we push the button and the menu is activated, we'll then set our inventory menu to false. We can then just copy that entire function, put it down here, and change this to if the menu is not activated, and then have it set our inventory menu to be true. One little addition we need to make is to add an else to the second if statement here. Otherwise, both of these statements could be true at the same time, and when we push the button, we could simultaneously activate and deactivate our menu. With that done, things will almost work, except that right now our menu activated bool is always false. So we need to just take that in here and make sure, first of all, that when the menu is being set active false, our menu activated is also false, and then make it true when our menu is being activated. And before we go any further, we'll run a quick test to make sure this is working. So if we click on our inventory canvas here and take a look at our inventory manager script, it just needs to know what object it's toggling on and off. So we can put our inventory menu into there. I'm also just going to click my men inventory menu here and turn it inactive so that at the start of the game, it is not actually on. Now, when I get into the game, I can press E to bring up my menu and push it again to put the menu away. Now, in order to pause our game whenever we open the inventory, we just need to go into our if statement here that opens the inventory. And we want to set our time.timescale to be equal to zero. This essentially pauses time in Unity, so keep in mind that this will stop physics interactions. Also, if you plan to animate your inventory, it can cause some problems, so just keep that in mind if you're going to use this method. Then we can head up to our other if statement and make sure that our time.timescale is set back to one when we deactivate the menu. All right, so now when I play my game, I can run and jump and hit pause, and you'll notice that my waves stop moving, my character froze in the air because time is stopped. And when I push E again, time resumes once more. All right, I hope you've found this tutorial helpful. If you have, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. There's more to come in the next one as we actually get these slots populated with some information and graphics. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.